Hello everyone, it's me, Michael, here to share another daily devotional with you. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be talking about um, my experience with my uh, physical father and my uh, experience with the Lord in my life. Kind of a little background of uh, how the Lord moved through my father uh, and, and um, the ref similarities between uh, my father and how I saw him and then how uh, we can sometimes see our uh, Heavenly Father when we're new in the faith. And so, but we'll be in beginning in 1 John chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 2. Uh, but before we get started, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time we get to spend in your word. We thank you for uh, your grace, Lord, and the love you've shown us, Lord. We pray that we would never uh, forget what you've done for us, Lord, and I pray that nothing gets in the way of uh, just coming to you in all our times of need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 through 2, I'll begin reading. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteousness, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the whole world. And so with my experience with my father, I have a pretty good memory of my early days uh, as a child. And so uh, around the age of four or five, I have a, a vivid memory of how I viewed my father. And um, it was during around that time, I believe he was uh, working away from the house. And uh, for a while, it wasn't until I was in my later years that he began to stay home and, and work out of his office. And so during that time he was away, he'd always come home from a long day of construction. And all I'd see uh, was the, the, the um, expression on his face of exhaustion after the longest day's work. And I viewed him as uh, very scary. I saw him as if I ever m messed up in front of him, that was it, I'm a goner. And so that was that way for a long time. But slowly and surely, through time and, and experience of being closer and spending more time with my father, I, I realized that he doesn't hate me. And he's not a, this big uh, guy who's just big, mean, and scary, but that he actually loves me. And that experience was made and uh, uh, fully Put together when uh, one occasion on one occasion when my father uh, asked to throw a football with me it was one of those small uh, rubber footballs but it was decently heavy and so the first time he hands me this football mind you I'm still pretty scared of my dad I take this football and I just chuck it tried it but I have a horrible arm and I completely miss I miss it by far my father and I actually hit and knock over a lamp onto a glass table and completely shatter the whole thing. And, and so my logical reaction to that was I was scared to death and more so I was crying. I was totally defeated by what had just happened. I completely messed up in front of my father and I thought there's no way he's going to forgive me from this. But, and I expecting to receive boy, you're in big trouble now, or some punishment from this. Instead, I received these loving words from my father. Son, it's all right. I love you. You're forgiven. And that was incredible for my life. As soon as I heard that, I realized my dad loves me more than anything else, more than anything I can mess up. My father loves me. And it's the same thing with our Heavenly Father. He loves us more than anything else. He loved us so much that he sent his son to die on the cross and raise, rise again for our sins. And so there shouldn't be anything that should be too powerful to get in the way of that love he has for us. Because just as my father would overlook a, a breaking expensive table just to assure me that he loves me and that I'm forgiven, 
how much more would our Heavenly Father do so for us if we confess our sins to Him? Just as 1 John 2, 1 says. In 1 John 1, 9, we read, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so it all it, it is is taking that step to confess. And of course, when I did break that table, it, I, I was sad, I was crying, but I did immediately. The first thing I did was, Dad, I'm so sorry, Dad, Dad, I'm sorry. And I'm crying, I'm bawling my eyes out. But that's when he said, Son, I love you, you're forgiven. And it's the same thing. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Proverbs 28, 13, we read, He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. And so we realize that there's nothing that gets in the way of, of what we've done. We've, Jesus has already paid that price for our sins. And whatever mess up it is that we have in our life should not be too large or too big to get in the way that the Lord love the Lord has for us. And so uh, my challenge and my, my uh, encouragement for you is don't let anything, anything at all, get in the way of God's love for you. And don't let the enemy take hold of uh, unconfessed sin or something you're holding on to that you did confess, but you're not sure that the Lord will forgive you because as a, my personal experience and the Bible and everything that I've spoken on today, the Lord loves you and he doesn't want to see you fall away from him. And if we don't confess our sins, we fall further and further away. But as soon as we're faithful and just, we, we, to confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God bless. Love you guys. See you again another time.